Hey, what's up everybody? This is Torch and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Today I have a tutorial for you. This time I'm in Ableton Live and I'm gonna show you how you can create seamless gradual tempo transitions in your live set. So let's say you're going from 110 BPM to 150 BPM and you don't wanna have such an abrupt change in tempo, uh, especially if you're trying to keep the momentum within your set. This is gonna offer you a way to do that in, a, in kind of a musical sort of way that your audience will never ever know and they'll just kind of ride along with it. Now the way I'm gonna show you is sort of the tried and true method. It's also the free method, but it's also the method that you must be using a Mac in order to do. I'm unaware at the moment that there is a free method of doing this if you're using a PC, but there are some paid options in the form of plugins that I'll recommend to you that are also very, very good at doing this exact same thing. One of those plugins is called Cliffix by Native Control, and it's around the $50 price range. The other one is a Max for Live plugin, and you can get that for around $14. And if you're interested in those options, I'll include two links below in the description. And uh, you can go ahead and purchase those if th that's the method you would like to use. But for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the free way. Yes. And it's quite simple, as you'll see. Oh, that's real good. So you can see that I'm in Ableton here, but actually the first step we're going to want to do is we're going to actually come out of Ableton and we're going to go into our search on the upper right hand corner here on our Mac. You're going to click that and you're going to type in audio MIDI setup and go ahead and click audio MIDI setup, a window pops up, and then you're gonna to wanna to go up into your menu options and click where it says window, go to show MIDI studio, and then another window pops up with a bunch of these module looking things. The one that we're gonna look at is the IAC driver. So I'm gonna double click on that, and another window pops up. And what you wanna make sure is that this box right here is checked off where it says device is online. Make sure that's ticked off, that means that it's on. And what this essentially allows you to do is to send MIDI signal out of Ableton and then into the IAC driver, which then sends that MIDI information back into Ableton. And this is what allows you to trigger things internally within Ableton. Pretty cool. Okay, so X out of those, once you got that set up, then move back into Ableton, and this is where we can start setting things up. Now, I don't need all of these channels, so I'm gonna actually get rid of a few of them. All I really need for today for the demonstration is one MIDI channel. And so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go down to where it says MIDI 2. So this is where we're sending out our MIDI. And you're gonna click in the drop down menu, and you're gonna select IAC driver. Now, if you don't see IAC driver in that drop down menu as an option, then you have to go to your live preferences and go to your MIDI tab and go to where it says MIDI ports and look underneath there and you're going to see in IAC driver and out IAC driver. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click the track boxes next to each of those and if you want, you can just kind of copy the settings that I have here and um, that should work for you. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go to one of these empty clip spaces and just double click on one of them and that's gonna create a dummy clip. We're gonna use this dummy clip to send out MIDI information that's going to trigger our tempo parameters. But before we do that, we're gonna want to change a couple things within the clip itself. So you're gonna to wanna to go into your envelope settings. And then in the drop down menu here where it says mixer, click that and then switch that to MIDI control since we're dealing with MIDI here. And then in the drop down menu to the right of that, click that. I'm gonna select one of the options here that's not being uh, used by anything. I'm just gonna select 16 general purpose one. And then you'll see that we have in this zone right here, we have at the very bottom a dotted orange line. Basically what that means is that the MIDI is not active for this clip and we obviously wanna change that. So you simply click on that orange line to engage the MIDI and now we're able to map this clip to any parameter within Ableton. 
So the next thing we're going to actually want to do is come right back up to our clip and just momentarily click on the play button and then press space bar to stop. Now it's green lit, which means it's activated and that's going to set it up for our next step, which is actually mapping this clip to our tempo settings. So let's go to our MIDI button up here to the upper right hand corner and you're going to click that. And now we're in MIDI map mode and you'll see that there's a bunch of purple zones and all of those purple zones are mappable. So if I click on any one of these zones, I can press space bar and then that zone will now be mapped to my clip. But for today, I know that I want to map my tempo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the tempo right here in the upper left. And I'm simply going to press my space bar to start playing. And as you can see, the clip is now mapped to our tempo. The next thing we want to go to is our MIDI mapping parameters. And we can see under where it says name, we're mapping song tempo. So any of these parameters are dealing with our song tempo. So we have a minimum of 20 and we have a maximum of 999. That's a pretty wide range if you ask me. And I don't know too many artists who are doing sets that have that sort of range. I would say a good range to work with might be, let's say 90. I think 90 BPM would probably be around a slowish tempo or maybe the slowest tempo you might play in a set. And then as far as how fast we're gonna play, I would say that 200 is probably the fastest you'll play unless you're doing, you know, some breakneck speeds, you know, playing like IDM or something. Okay. So once that's set up, we're good to go. We can go right back into, um, regular mode here. And, um, if we go ahead and just press space bar to play everything, you'll see that this tempo is going to shoot down to 90. That's because we've set our minimum to 90. But let's say that we want to create a set and let's say our first song is at 110. I'm going to type in 110 in our global settings here. And I'm just going to go ahead and play this. Obviously there's no music, but there's click track. All right, so we're locked in at 110. So let's say that we want to create a transition from 110 to 150. That's what we're going to do using this clip right here. So I'm actually just going to label this 110 to 150. And that's just for organizational purposes. That's just telling me, oh, if I click this clip, it's going to be a tempo ramp up of 110 to 150. That's pretty much it. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to here in my loop here. I'm going to start playing this and I'm going to get this click track off just because I don't want to hear it, <laughs> but I'm going to click this and now we're seeing it shot back down to 90. So we're just going to drag this up here until we reach a tempo of around 110. Okay, so as you can see, we're not directly at 110. It's at 110.79. Now that's maybe the only drawback of using this method is that it's very hard to lock in at a specific tempo or an even tempo. Um, but you'll see in a minute that it's not gonna matter all that much. Um, but for now, we're in the ballpark, and that's really all we need to do. So this is setting us up for the minimum tempo for this ramp up. So now we want to make it so that it ramps up to 150. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go down to my clip setting here, and I'm going to turn this loop setting off because when I play this clip, I just want it to play through once and give me the uh, destination tempo and so that I can raise raise it or lower it as needed. So let's just see where it's at. 
So because we didn't change anything, it's staying at 110. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to my clip and I'm gonna go over here to the right hand side. You'll see that it says a number 24. Notice how the number 24 and 110, there's no connection there. That's what makes this a little bit complicated. But once you kind of understand how to do this, it's not that difficult at all. So I'm just gonna click and I'm just gonna raise this. Maybe I'll go up to around 45 or something. I don't know what this is gonna land on, but I'm gonna press play on my clip and it's gonna tell me. So we landed at 128.98. We're trying to get to 150, so let's raise it up even more. Let's try 55. All right, play the clip, see where that lands. All right, we're at 137.64. Still got a little ways to go, so let's raise that up even more. Let's go to about 65. Okay, now we'll play our clip, see where that lands. Okay, getting closer, but not quite there. So keep raising it, I'll go to 70. Play the clip, see where that lands. Okay, so not exactly 150, we're at 150.63, but as I mentioned, it's gonna be very, very hard to get it so that it's exactly 150, but you'll see in a minute that that's not gonna matter all that much. Okay, so let's just kind of like bring this down a bit so we can see a little better what's going on here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my master and I'm actually gonna go to the left, the very left-hand side of that master channel, click, and I'm gonna drag this out. And you can see what that now does is it shows us that we have our tempo parameters and we have our meter parameters there too. Um, so what I'm going to do here is in scene one, I know that I have a song here and we're going to say that's at 110 BPM. So I'm going to click enter and lock that in at 110. And then we have our transition here on this scene. So I'm just going to name this transition so that we can just see that right away. And by the end of this transition, we're at 150 BPM, right? So then I'm going to lock that tempo in by the next scene. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that section and I'm gonna type in 150, enter. So you can see that the transition is gonna bring you from 110 to 150 roughly because we have decimal points. But you also have these kind of bookends 110 starting and then 150 starting. The thing is those decimal points in terms of the tempo and how it feels are gonna be barely noticeable, barely noticeable. Uh, let me illustrate that. I'm obviously don't have any music here, but um, you can hear the click track and you'll be able to hear that in terms of the, the timing, the tempo of this, it's, it's barely, barely, barely noticeable. Um, here it is. So I'm gonna start at 110. We're gonna go into our transition. That was the ramp up. Check out the global tempo here. We're at 149.76, not quite 150. Now I'm gonna go into this scene here and lock it in at 150 and you'll hear there's barely, barely a difference. 150. So, barely noticeable, as you can see. Um, so you can barely notice it, which means the people in your audience are definitely barely gonna notice it if as long as things are working smoothly, um, that should do the trick. Now let's go ahead and add another tempo transition. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this down. And um, I just did option and drag and that automatically copies the clip. I'm gonna go ahead also and just rename this transition so that way we can tell. 
And I'm just going to do kind of the, the polar opposite here. Instead of going 110 to 150, I'm going to go 150 to 110. So I'm going to go into my clip and let's raise this up so we can see. Now we know that 150 or thereabouts is at 70 and 110 thereabouts is at 24. So now I'm going to make the beginning of this at around 70. So 70 is going to be around 150. And then at the end here, I'm going to change that down to 24. So now we'll go from around 150 to around 110. Okay. So now let's go ahead and play this. It's at 150 right now. So, okay. And then I'm going to launch this transition and we should go from 150 smoothly down to 110. Here we go. Awesome. So that's your smooth transition. Now, obviously you might want to lock that next scene into 110. So you just click type in 110, enter. And now that will lock it into 110 once you launch that scene. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to 150. All right, here we go. Play from 150. Transition from 150 to 110. Here we go. Okay, and then to lock it in at 110. Now we're at 110. Okay, so you can barely, barely, barely tell that there is like a little minute difference. It's just, you can't even detect it. So let's actually do a whole run through of that just so you can even further see it. So we're at our original tempo of 110. So we'll start there, 110. Now we'll do the transition. Okay. We're at 150.63. Now we'll lock it in at 150. I didn't feel a difference, did you? Okay. Now we'll move into our next part, the transition from 150 down to 110. Okay. Now we're at 110.79 but we want to lock it into to an even BPM. Now we're at 110 even. So that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. And you, you can do this with any BPM within the range that you have it set to, and it's pretty easy. And this is the free tried and true method that I've used for several years now. So I hope that tutorial was helpful for you. Please let me know if it was and um, I'll catch you in the next tutorial. This is Torch signing off. Peace.